Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you guys are all doing well. In this video, we're taking a look at the Battalion Camel 2 snowboard. So this is kind of like the evolution of the CT, similar shape and design, but comes through with a very different feel to it. So today I'm gonna go through all the tech and then I'll share my thoughts on how it felt on snow as well. Let's jump into it. All right, so the Camel 2 is a directional free ride and powder board on the Battalion lineup. It's got an overall directional shape. If you look at the nose outside the front contact points here, that widest point on the nose of the board, it's gonna have a significantly longer nose than tail. It also has some other directional features. It runs a 20 millimeter taper. So the tail of the board is actually quite a bit narrower than the nose of the board but it doesn't have a setback stance. So the reference stance is centered in the side cut. If you did want that added powder benefit, shifting your weight closer to the tail, you, you would wanna shift that stance back a little bit from reference stance. So other than that, this board has a lot of carbon built into it. It's got some carbon stringers running in a V shape in the nose. So right from under your front foot going out to the contact points here, it's got carbon running in a V, helping to make this board more responsive edge to edge and just give a little more stability and energy in the nose. Also gonna help to cut down on chatter and vibrations in the front from reaching your foot and having to deal with that in your legs. It also has one carbon stringer going from that rear insert pack straight out to the tail to give the tail more energy, more pop, more snap, as well as their dual super tubes. So more carbon kind of on the outside of the bindings here on both the nose and the tail through the center of the board. So really just loaded up with a bunch of carbon, very lightweight material that helps to give the board more energy and more snap overall. It also runs a centered base, which is known to be a harder, faster, more durable base material compared to an extruded base. It is a higher end base material, so you wanna make sure you're waxing it regularly. It holds wax very well, it absorbs more wax. You're gonna to wanna to make sure to do that to maintain that consistent glide that you're used to from day one on this guy. And lastly, you're gonna get the staples from Battalion as well on the Camel 2. So that's gonna be full tip to tail positive camber coming through with that more energetic, precise feel with that profile in general, full positive camber, as well as triple base technology. So that's something that Battalion varies on their boards depending you know, what they're going for. So on the Camel 2 here, you're gonna find their powder specific triple base technology. So first of all, it's a 3D kind of base shape. It's gonna give you a lot of benefits. With the PAL 3BT, it's gonna have the narrowest center base is what you call it. So about this much of the nose and tail is gonna be flat like a traditional snowboard. Then outside of that, you're gonna get 3D shaping where the board actually spoons up and lifts up the base and edge away from the snow. In powder and soft snow, that's gonna give you a more efficient glide, allowing that snow to funnel out the sides of the board. It's also gonna give you a really smooth, quick edge to edge transition. Feels great in powder, also noticeable on hard pack. It kind of feels like you're rolling from edge to edge and also gonna give you a very catch free feel on hard pack. So if you're going flat base on a cat track, you're pressed into the nose doing butters, whatever it may be, it's gonna significantly reduce the chances of you catching. And the 3BT is way more prominent in the nose, but you are gonna find it in the tail as well. Another couple specs I like to touch on is the waist width first off. So at a 153, you're gonna find a 256 millimeter waist on this board. Not especially wide by any means, pretty average width on this guy. Gonna come through with that traditional, pretty quick edge to edge feel that you'll find on most like twin and all mountain boards as well as a larger side cut. I think that's definitely something worth calling out on this board. That large side cut is gonna naturally throw you into longer, more drawn out turns, and has a really good feel as you start to ride faster. You know, those longer turns are just gonna uh, have a little bit of a less aggressive feel as you're going at faster speeds and help you keep a little bit more in control. One of the things that surprised me the most about this board is actually the flex. So for reference, I weigh around 150 pounds, I'm five foot 10, rode this board in a 153, and it is significantly softer compared to the CT. I'd say definitely on the softer side of medium. Uh, stability isn't gonna be a huge strong suit on this board. This thing comes through with a much more of a playful feel to it. You can really get some nice flex out of this board, just casually leaning into the nose or tail, you're gonna be able to get some nice tall presses. It's a lot of fun for butters and just playing around on side hits, natural features. It doesn't have an aggressive feel at all. It's definitely more on the playful side of the spectrum for a free ride board. 
That softer flex is a lot of fun for that more playful approach to your riding. It's gonna help with turn initiation as well, allowing for real quick turns with that softer torsional flex. Gonna be a lot of fun in the trees or really any situation where you gotta make quick adjustments. It's gonna make that a little bit easier on you. But it does come at a bit of a compromise when it comes to stability and that high speed carving. So if you're looking for a board that's like that no speed limit, high speed charger free ride board, this is not gonna be the one. This is definitely for more casual cruising around. And as you get it up to those faster speeds, you know, you start to get that feel where it's a little squirrely. Maybe you could get overpowered if you start to go through some chop or chunky variable snow, find some chatter in the nose as well. But for the most part, it's gonna be very capable. I like that feel where you can just kind of get it to do what you want it to do without it fighting back too much. But it's not a board I would point and just bomb hills and try to go as fast as I could go. I was able to take this board to one of my favorite tree zones out of Keystone for a nice pow test and it floats pretty effortlessly. I wouldn't really worry about setting the stance back unless it was like a true bottomless day, but that combination of the pow 3BT, that super long nose we got up here, plus the taper, it's gonna be plenty for a pow day. It's got a maneuverable feel in soft snow as well. Not gonna be a problem swiveling through trees, even in deeper snow. Not as maneuverable as like a true fish board that has no tail. You know, you are gonna have to work it through that powder a little bit, but I think the fact that it is centered in the side cut gives this board a lot more versatility when it comes to all mountain riding as well. So it's a good compromise between that free ride all mountain performance plus powder performance. And lastly, if you were thinking about taking this board in the park, you know, it is a lot of fun for rollers, natural features, butters, all that kind of stuff. With the directionality, that longer nose is something that you'll want to watch out for if you are in a proper terrain park on the takeoff on jumps, coming onto rails, make sure you're not clipping up. It does have a slightly different feel riding switch because of that taper as well. And uh, it's not something I would be really taking to the park too often personally. I did see my friend Grant take this board out in the park for a few days out at Copper. He's pro for battalion. He can ride pretty much any board in any condition. So not something I would say is a focus for this board, but uh, can definitely be done. I'll throw a clip here to show you what Grant was putting down on it. So yeah, pretty crazy. Definitely shows that it can be done. You know, that softer flex, the centered stance, zero setback is gonna be helpful if you do wanna do that, but I wouldn't say that this is a, a freestyle focus board by any means. Overall, because this is a more specialty design, you know, leaning more towards that free ride carving, powder focus type of riding, I'd recommend it to at least intermediate riders and up. This could be a great first addition to your quiver outside of your twin board, coming through with that more playful, manageable feel, but still has all the characteristics to really elevate your experience in that more carving and powder focused riding. It's gonna be a totally different feel from what you're used to. Carving's gonna feel so much better, gonna be way more fun, and having that added float just changes the game on deep days. So if you're looking for something like that, definitely check out the Battalion Camel 2. I'll have it linked below if you guys wanna read more about it. And if you've had a chance to ride this board, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. Feel free to leave any questions for me down there as well. Drop a like if you got some value and make sure to subscribe for more board reviews. I really appreciate it guys. See you next time.